witches. The absolutely true tale of disaster in Salem. By Rosalind Shanzer. Chapter 3. Let the grilling begin. On March 1st, hordes of gawkers from miles around rode on horseback or slogged on foot through the flooded coastal roads leading to a tavern in Salem Village. They could hardly wait to find out what would happen at the questioning of three suspects. Before long, an ugly crowd grew so big that everyone had to move to the church instead. Today's plan was to question the suspects and decide if they should appear before a grand jury at a later date. If the grand jury determined that there was enough evidence against these three women, they would eventually face a formal trial. Nobody could be executed for witchcraft or anything else before appearing all three times. But accused people could most certainly be sent to prison in fact, they would be stuck in the jailhouse for a very long time as the process dragged on. First, the three accused women were examined for witches' marks. Did they have warts or bumps anywhere on their bodies that could be used as teats to feed their evil animal familiars? Not a mark was found. Next, the two magistrates began their interrogation. Only one suspect was brought into the room at a time, but even before the defendants spoke a single word, it was obvious that the magistrates thought all three of them were witches. And it didn't help their cause a bit when all day long the four accusers kept screeching and tumbling around on the floor and crying out that the suspect's spirits were swooping through the air to torture them. A man named Ezekiel Cheevers wrote down the questions and answers as fast as he could. Of course, he already thought the women were guilty too, as you can tell from his comments. The Examination of Sarah Good Magistrate John Hawthorne Sarah Good, what evil spirit is your familiar? None. Why did you hurt these poor children? I do not hurt them. I scorn the very idea. Then what creature do you employ to hurt them? There is no creature. I am falsely accused. Why did you go away muttering from Mr. Paris' house? I did not mutter. I thanked him for what he gave my child. Recorder's Note Hawthorne asks the children to look upon Sarah Good and see if this were the person who had hurt them, and so they said this was one of the persons that did torment them. Presently, they were all tormented by fits. Hawthorne, Sarah Good, do you not see what you have done? Why don't you tell us the truth? Who do you serve? I serve God, the same God that made heaven and earth Recorder's note. Her answers were given in a very wicked, spiteful manner, retorting against the authority with foul and abusive words, and many lies. Her husband said that he was afraid she either was a witch or would become one very quickly. Quote, and indeed, end quote, said he, I may say with tears that she is an enemy to all that is good, end quote. The Examination of Sarah Osborne The girls in the courtroom announced that Sarah Osborne was one of the three witches who were torturing them in this very room. Then they began to shake violently and tumbled to the floor. When grilled by the furious magistrate, Osborne cried that she had never seen an evil spirit or met with the devil in her life. She was not torturing anyone. 
Sarah Good saith it was you that hurt the children, argued the magistrate. I have not seen her for two years, Osborne replied, insisting that for all she knew, the devil had the power to make himself look exactly like her. Then he could go around in her shape to attack the girls, but she would have to take the blame. Three people reported that the bedridden woman thought she was more likely to be a victim of witchcraft than to be a witch herself. When asked to explain, Osborne replied that she had dreamed she saw a black Indian who pinched her and pulled her to the door. Hawthorne was not impressed, implying that she was unfaithful to God. He asked why Osborne hadn't come to church for the past two years. Alas, I have been sick and not able to go, she cried. The Examination of Tituba The afflicted girls again began to writhe around, screech and howl when the slave Tituba's turn came to be questioned. At first, she said she was completely innocent and that she and the children would never hurt each other. But a little later, she completely changed her tune and confessed that she was guilty. The recorder who wrote down everyone's testimony didn't bother to say so, but it's possible that the questioning stopped for a while and then started up again after a break because many months later, Tituba would reveal that she had lied when she told the court she was a witch. She claimed Reverend Paris had beaten her to make her confess and to make sure that she accused the two women Paris called her, quote, sister witches, end quote. He even threatened not to pay any of the fees required to get her out of jail unless she told the magistrates that she was guilty. Tituba must have followed her master's orders. Magistrate, what doth the devil look like? Tituba, like a man. Yesterday he told me to serve him. I I told him no, I, I would not do such a thing. Tituba charged that Sarah Osborne and Sarah Good were torturing the children and wanted her to hurt them too. And she said that she had seen two more witches from Boston just last night when she was cleaning. They told her she had to hurt the children, and if she refused, they would hurt her themselves. At first she agreed to hurt Betty and Abigail, but afterwards she was very sorry and told the woman she wouldn't do it anymore. Tituba, the creature that looked like a man came to me just as I was going to sleep. He said uh, he would kill the children and they would never get well if I did not serve him. Magistrate, what other creatures hath appeared to you? Sometimes a hog, four times a great black dog who told me to serve him. I told him I was afraid. He told me he would do worse tortures unto me. Tituba said that the man had pretty things and offered her a little yellow bird if she would become his servant. Then he sent her two cats, one red and one black, and as big as a dog. But when she said her prayers and tried not to pinch Betty and Abigail, the cat scratched her eyes, pulled her across the room, and almost threw her into the fire. Tituba felt even worse when the man appeared with Dr. Griggs's niece and made her pinch this girl too. Magistrate, did you ever go along with these women, Sarah Good and Sarah Osborne? Tituba, yes, they are very strong and, and pulled me and made me go with them up to Mr. Putnam's house to hurt his child. The man pulled me too, but I am sorry. How did you get there? We rode upon a stick with Good and Osborne sitting behind me and taking hold of one another. I saw no trees or path, but was presently there. They, they told me I must kill Thomas Putnam's child with a knife. And Putnam Jr. confirmed Tituba's story saying that they would have made Tituba cut off her own head if the slave refused to kill her. 
Then, said Tituba, Good had tried to give her the yellow bird or a cat. Tituba refused to take them, though she wished she could give the pretty bird to the children. Magistrate, what did Osborne have? Tituba, she hath two creatures, one hath wings and and two legs and a head like a woman's. The other thing was all over hairy, all the face was hairy and had a long nose. I don't know what it is. It was about two or three feet high and walked upright like a man. And at night it stood before the fire in Mr. Paris's hall. Back to jail went the three women. Good was first sent to a prison in the town of Ipswich. She even had to bring along her tiny infant. And as she rode away, seated sideways on a horse behind her guard, she swore that she was innocent, tried three times to escape, once bloodying her arm, and then tried to kill herself. Jailers were allowed to question people in prison whenever they felt like it. So, Tituba and Osborne were questioned all over again in the Salem jail, a dank, filthy dungeon full of rats, where women were strip searched so the guards could look for witches' marks, and where food and water were withheld, or prisoners were tortured in other ways to make them confess. Even though Tituba followed Paris's orders by claiming to be a witch, he still hadn't paid her jail fees. Tituba told the guards that she had been forced to stick herself with a pin in order to sign the devil's book with her own blood. And when she was examined, fresh wounds were found on her body. That's when she claimed Good and Osborne were torturing her out of spite for telling the court that they were witches. The magistrates and jailers all believed her. In fact, they thought she was very brave. Some people thought Tituba's wounds were the devil's work. Others later claimed that she bore old scars from Spanish cruelty when she was captured as a child. But did these fresh wounds really come from Paris's beating? Of course, Osborne still maintained her innocence. And in a few days, Good and her baby were sent to Salem's jail too, where both Good and Osborne were shackled to the wall with heavy chains. On March 7th, all three suspects were transported to another filthy, lice-ridden jail in far-off Boston, where they would be charged a fee for every single day of their stay, whether they were guilty or not. They also had to pay for their own shackles, if you were imprisoned in those days, you had to pay a great many fees, even to the very jailers who tortured you, and even if you had no money. Otherwise, you could never be set free. Since Tituba had confessed and her young accusers no longer claimed to see her specter, she didn't have to wear chains or go to trial. But until she could pay her jail fees, she most certainly had to stay in prison.